hatchings where the Navy was implicated, the NOAA team found whales that had died from suffocation injuries. It is believed the loud sound of the Navy's sonar scared the whales into the shallows where they stranded themselves. Without water to support their massive weight, the whales' internal organs collapsed, slowly suffocating them. That's what the NOAA team expected to find in the autopsy remains. Signs of internal organ collapse. They found something else instead. When we looked at the samples, uh, we expected to see evidence of trauma. The bleeding from the ears indicated as much. What we were not prepared for was the extent. The internal organs hadn't collapsed. What we were seeing was consistent with blunt force trauma. There were circular lesions on the samples, clear evidence of damage, and, uh, and these were in every sample that we'd taken. Brian had an immediate theory, infrasound, very powerful ultra-low frequency sound waves that could theoretically be weaponized and potentially be used to devastating effect. They would slam into living tissue with incredible speed and incredible force. Those slides showed evidence of catastrophic impact injury, uh, impact injury that we believed was caused by a new kind of Navy sonar, a sonic blast that did more than just scare whales into the shallows. This sonar uh, seemed to kill them. Well, Brian realized that we didn't need the tissue to test our theory. We have, uh, NOAA has these arrays that record audio, uh, marine life, seismic activity. And one of these uh, boys was very close by. So we know it was likely that we had recorded the whole event. The sonar blast, the whale reactions, everything. Well, first there was the sound of the, the whale vocalizations, which we expected. And then there was what we now understand to be the priming of the sonar weapon. And, and then there was a, a moment of silence, and this proved to be the calm before the storm, because then it was BAM. It was, it was pretty awful to listen to. 